Welcome to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith and today I'm bringing you my July TBR. Yeah, it's almost July. I was shocked too. I'm filming this right at the end of June, it's Friday the 26th, so there is still a little bit of June left, but I wanted to have some time to edit this and to make it good and fun. There may be some books on here that I might have started already and it doesn't matter. This is what I'm going to try and finish in July. I have a huge stack next to me, there's a lot of own TBR on this and there were some review copies as well and a lot of rereads and yeah it's gonna be a good time. I'm very close to finishing my TBR and it's frustrating because I'm very close to finishing my TBR and then I thought about it and there were some books on the shelf that I technically haven't read that I never added to my TBR spreadsheet so the numbers have all been lies, I'm very sorry. I'm gonna try and finish those this month and get everything in order ready for hopefully some more books to come in at some point. I don't know how it's gonna work. Join me in this exciting time of not having 50 books on my TBR. I'm going to go through this in a fairly arbitrary order. I'm pretty sure the spreadsheet that I have that keeps track of this all is set up to do when it was most recently added, but I, I don't think that's entirely worked here, so excuse the randomness of this. It'll all come together in the end. First up, I have a digital review copy of A Declaration on the Rights of Magicians. Yes, that is right, by H.G. Parry. This is the author of The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heap, which I read at the beginning of the year and really loved and have a dedicated review to you can go and watch that but yes I'm very excited to read the next book. Um, it's not a series this is a completely different world but it is her next book. This actually came out I think in June but I'm a little bit behind because that's what happens when the review copy comes in but I've already set my TBR. This book is set in the Age of Enlightenment which Google informs me is between the 17th and 19th century kind of time so it's kind of set in that period but there's a lot of magic happening on top of it uh, and it's been compared to uh, is it Dr. Norrell and Mr. Strange or Mr. Strange and Dr. Norrell? Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, there are no doctors here. It's been compared to that and I think that makes sense. I expect it'll also be a bit Sorcerer to the Crown by Zencho because it's magic on top of a historical period, that kind of thing. I'm a bit wary of this because it's dealing with real world events, so for example the Haitian Revolution, but in this fantasy context and I don't know how well that's going to be handled, like in this context it's a weather mage organising that revolution and I'm not sure how I feel about co-opting a thing that actually happened into a fantasy story. I think it's different when you're looking at something like Jonathan Strange and Mr Norrell where it's the Napoleonic Wars as a whole thing uh, and they're advising and other stuff is happening but in this case if it's I am the person that led that revolution when actually you weren't I, I'm a bit wary of it. Obviously The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heap was rooted firmly in fiction uh, and this one is less so and yeah, it could go either way, I'm intrigued. Next up I have Calamity by Brendan Sanderson. I expect you've been expecting this if you've been watching along. I read books one and two of this series which is the Reckoners trilogy in Jul June uh, and I'm gonna finish it off in July. Uh, yeah I'm looking forward to this. I really like the first one. I was less sold on the second one which you'll hear about in my wrap-up but basically I think that the characters are a bit blur but I like the world building and the meta plot I think is really cool. Um, so yeah I'm interested. It, it could be really good, it could be the nail in the coffin for this and I just hang on to the first one because I liked it. I'm not sure. Next I have Daisy Jones and the Six and I've forgotten what the author's name is but it will be on the screen. <laughs> this is after the recommendation of many many booktubers but especially Justine who loved this. It was in a Kindle sale and I thought I would pick it up and give it a go. It's not what I usually read but I do like to step outside of my comfort zone on occasion. This book catalogues the events leading up to the split of a fictional rock group. Uh, I think they break up in 1979 and it's told through interviews and yeah it just sounds really interesting. I don't know a huge amount of this, I'm not going in blind but I don't know what the actual plot is, I've just heard people talk about how the book is set up, so yeah I'm interested. Next I have The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow, this is a review copy. I do keep mixing up Alex E. Harrow and H.G. Perry, uh, I don't know why, I think it must just be something about the books coming out around about the same time, but their first books didn't, I don't know, I'm confused about it. But no, this is Alex E. Harrow who wrote The Ten Thousand Doors of January. This time we're in 1893 and there were witches, or are there? This is kind of a blending of the suffragist movement and witches and Salem and I don't, again, don't know how it's going to go. I have a lot of problems with people who elevate the suffragist movement. I think it's got its problems and people don't acknowledge that so I'm interested to see if this does. I think it could work. Again, if you're dealing with a real world thing that happened and then you're inserting fantasy characters in, how well is that going to go? I'm trepidatious but excited to read it because I think, I think Alexi Harris' writing is absolutely beautiful and it could be great. 
or I could not like it. Let's find out. Next, I have Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. Barron, I'm not 100% sure. I'll be honest, I fell completely for this cover. I think it's absolutely stunning. But then I read the concept and everything and I was like, yes, I am here for this. So this is set 200 years after the events of Cinderella, obviously, uh, and in this world, then girls have to attend a royal ball and if they aren't chosen by a man their lives are somehow forfeit so we're getting kind of like fantasy dystopian in here which I'm really excited for. I'll read you a quote from the synopsis which really grabbed me. But Sophia doesn't want to be chosen. She doesn't want to go to the ball at all. Not when she's afraid the girl she loves might be chosen too. I think you can get from that why I'm really excited about this. Next I have Phoenix Extravagant by Yoon Lee. This I saw on Justine's book haul. I think it was the Goldsboro Special Science Sci-Fi Edition, which I should subscribe to because I think I would love it, but I'm trying to save money. This is out in October and it's out from Rebellion, I think, who are an Oxford-based publisher, which is kind of exciting. So we have our main character who, while they want to be a painter, they can't be for various reasons, but they end up painting these magical symbols onto the occupying governments or occupying militaries automata and that brings them to life and they're magical and then they realise that everything's terrible so they steal this giant dragon automata and basically go off to try and presumably save everyone. Like, stealing a dragon and overthrowing the government? Thank you, yes. Next I have a book that's out in August, Seven Devils by Laura Lamb and Elizabeth May. This is a sci-fi feminist book. I'm a bit dubious about this one only because I really wanted to love Goldilocks by Laura Lamb which came out earlier this year. I just didn't. It really fell a little bit flat for me. I think the focus was on the wrong things in terms of what I wanted to read. So yeah, we've got women in space overthrowing the government. Like, I'm here for that. But, but I, I don't I don't want to get my hopes up. That's what I'm saying with this one. Next, another one that won't be a surprise if you've been following along at home. This is Mayday by Josie Jeffrey. This is the first book in the Seekers series. I'm so excited to finally get to this. This is urban fantasy paranormal vampire stuff, which isn't normally my jam. I don't read it at all. Not because I don't like it. It's just never been something I really got into. Uh, but I've read some of Josie's stuff before and really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to reading this. It's queer. It's Oxford. I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be really good fun. Next, I'm so excited to say I'm going to be reading the Burning God by R.F. Quang. I am just dying. I got approved for this on NetGalley like 30 seconds after requesting it, which was madness. I assumed it was a sampler, I opened it, and I was like, no, this is the full book. Ah. Um, so I got that while I was writing my notes for this video. So uh, yes, I'm very excited. This is the third book in the Poppy War trilogy. I can't remember if that's the name of the trilogy or not, but the first book is the Poppy War, the second book is the Dragon Republic. Ah, it's really nice to get to read this now. We moved here about a year ago now, maybe just under. I read The Dragon Republic, I think I read The Poppy War and The Dragon Republic, lying on the floor of our living room because we didn't have furniture yet, uh, and just being so happy to read it and enjoy it. And yeah, it's it's the right time of year for it. This doesn't actually come out till November. I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot because much like with Empire of Gold and The Bone Child Daughter, I will have read this before other people do and I won't be able to talk to anyone about it. So if you've also been approved for a copy of The Burning God, please please do let me know so we can either buddy read it, talk about it, something. I'm desperate. I don't know whether to also, because I've got a slightly smaller TBR this month and hopefully I can keep the momentum from my June TBR going, I don't know whether to try and reread The Poppy War and The Dragon Republic this month. I might attempt it and then if I need to push The Burning God into August then I'm still ahead of the game. Maybe. I'm trying to work it out. I think it will be better if I do reread them, which is what I have for Empire of Gold. Maybe an audiobook. I could get some audiobooks, that would be fun. That's all of my review copies, I think. I'm pretty sure. I'm leaving a bit of space because I think more will come in. There's a lot published at the end of the year. But I also have owned reads and rereads that I picked out of my rereads jar, which is behind me so you can't see it. But I did pick them out and I'm going to go through them now. First I have Our Dark Duet by V. Schwab. This is the second book in the Monsters of Verity duology. Uh, so I maybe ought to go back and reread the first one because I haven't actually read these since June 2017. But I think it'll be fun to read just the second one. And I'm not, I'm not pernickety about these things. This is a city in which the violence has started to breed actual monsters and if I recall correctly there's kind of a non-romance in it uh, and yeah I'm looking forward to picking this up again it might persuade me to reread the Savage Song as well. Good times! Next I have The Graces by Laura Eve. This I am looking forward to. I actually didn't hang on to or didn't buy a copy of the second one because I read the second one The Curses and I really didn't like it and I'm really interested to see what reading this one on its own is like now that I've read both partly because I think the reason this book hit so hard for me was I wasn't expecting a part of it. And I won't go into too much detail because I think it would be a huge spoiler to go into it, but uh, this is just so good. But will it be so good knowing what I know now? Or will it improve it and make it a more interesting read? 
I don't know. Next I have a reread of Fly By Night by Frances Harding. This I am so looking forward to. I haven't had a Frances Harding reread yet this year and I've been wanting to get back to these. I last read this when I was on a cruise in Norway. Very fancy. Would love another one. Uh, but yes, I've been looking forward to rereading it pretty much ever since. There's an angry goose, there's a girl who knows how to read and that's basically hugely powerful in this world. It's, it's gonna be so good and I'm so looking forward to it. If I remember correctly, this is one where it's more about the characters than it is about the world, which I think is unusual for Frances Harding, or at least kind of it splits into sometimes it's really, really into the world building and sometimes it's not. But yeah, I am really excited to reread this. And I think there is a second one in this, yeah, Twilight Robbery, which I haven't actually read. So maybe this will persuade me to pick that up at some point. Next up, I have Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This was a fairy loot. I think this might have been the last fairy loot box I got. I have a feeling. Um, yeah, I'm basically here for the hot magician. I'm, I'm good. I think I read this way too quickly the first time because I don't really remember much about it. I think it was in my period where I was like, I just need to get through my TBR and I'm much better at remembering things now, partly because I have to vlog about them, but also just generally. Book memory is improving. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to reading this. Asha read this for the first time recently and really enjoyed it and that kind of sparked my interest. So I'm really glad this came out of the reread jar. And then last of my rereads for this month, I have Hero at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton. This is the third book in, is it the Rebel of the Sands trilogy? I don't actually know, but the first one is Rebel of the Sands. Again, I read this very quickly the first time I read it. I get so excited for final books and trilogies because I want to find out what happens before anyone spoils it for me, and then I read it too quickly and forget everything. So rereads are very important for me for third books. Um, I'm looking forward to this. I haven't read these in quite some time. Yeah, 2018, so at least two years. Um, I think it will be a good time. So then I have three books that were on my shelf that never got added to my TBR, that I never read. So I want to read them or at least pick them up and then decide if I do or don't want to read them. Uh, first up is a bit of a weird one. I have The Mask of Troy by David Gibbons. This is 100% on here because I got it for really cheap, like 33p, while I was on holiday with my mum uh, in one of these kind of like three for a pound at the back of a church book things. And we picked it up because it thought it looked terrible. Uh, and I think it probably is. So if it's so terrible that it's funny, I will read the whole thing. And if it's just terrible, I will DNF it. But I need to decide that. I don't know why I've hung on to this for so long. Next, I have two books by Neil Gaiman. And the reason these didn't get on my TBR, I have like a little bit of Gaiman somewhere, just here. Um, and my mum bought Katie a whole set of Gaiman probably a couple of years ago for her birthday. And so I didn't need to add them to my TBR. They weren't my books, but these are the only bookshelves we have and they are all my books. And I would quite like to read these because I've liked Neil Gaiman books in the past. Not a huge fan of him as a person, but uh, I've liked the books. So the two that I haven't read yet are Anansi Boys, which honestly I don't know anything about. A kaleidoscopic journey deep into myth that is at once startling, terrifying, exhilarating, and fiercely funny. Could be good. And then... American Gods, which I've never read, I know, uh, I'm late in the day. I think I was put off this uh, from hearing bits of it from people and then I tried to watch the TV show and I wasn't sold, uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna give it a go and if I don't like it, then I don't need to read it and that's fine. These can make their way onto some other shelf of these aren't technically my books. I don't know why it bothers me so much, but I suppose it's because they're also in the background and shots and things. That is 17 books. As you know, my TBR is usually around about 19 books a month, uh, but I'm gonna leave space for two additional reads. I'm not sure what they will be yet. I'm gonna leave space for maybe review copies, maybe more rereads. I don't know yet. Let's see where we get to by the end of the month. Let me know in the comments below what you're reading this month. Are you reading any of these? Uh, I know a few of them have been doing the rounds, so hopefully you will be. Or have you already read any of them and want to tell me either don't go there or yes, you need to read that sooner? I don't know. You can also subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. I will see you in the next one.